Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. It is a stash with Stephanie Day where we take a brand new fabric line that's come out and we design a pattern that goes just for it. And this month we are working with Perennial by Sarah Golden for Andover Fabrics. I just fell in love with this line because I not only have a problem with quilting and fabric, I also have a plant addiction. It takes me a full hour to water all my house plants. It's a little nuts and a little insane. And I've really enjoyed gardening during the pandemic and getting out there and getting my hands dirty. And let me tell you, pulling some weeds, while generally not fun, it's a great form of stress relief when you can't control anything else that is going on. So I really enjoyed that and I really love these prints too because they are earthy colors but in a modern way. So a lot of times when we think of browns and greens, we think of Civil War um, and those fabrics and nothing against the Civil War reproductions. Obviously we needed those to get to where we're at today. It's just not my cup of tea, but these are just a real modern twist on it and it looks very, very good. This quilt does on my bed and I have a very modern setting, you know, gray walls, dark teal uh, cabinets and it is, it just looks fabulous in there. So I really think that you guys are going to enjoy this as well. The pattern is called Stargazer, like the Stargazer Lily, because it's a six-pointed block, and we're going to break it down because this pattern is not hard. It looks very challenging, so I really like patterns like that where they look like you really, really had to put in a ton of effort, but when you break it down, it's not hard. It's three basic triangles that we're going to put together. One of them we just cut as a whole triangle, and the other two go together pretty simply, and we'll go over all those steps in today's video, so that way you can have success and create this beautiful pattern at home. If you're a member of the Stash with Stephanie Club, you get this pattern along with all the others that we've released for the Stash with Stephanie Club for free. And if you just want to get the pattern, you can do that as well. And we will have quilt kits while supplies last for this as well. This is a limited edition line, so we never know how long they're going to hang around for. But we do have them currently, and so you can go check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsonymous.com. Let's take a peek at the fabric, and then we're going to start sewing. So this is perennial, and I really just love so much about this line. Uh, the cut flowers are really pretty, but it's in a very modern block print way. And they did a really good job with coming up with some supporting prints to go with this as well. They've got some stripes that are more organic like flowers. And then they have this speckle that you can see throughout it. So this looks to me like a little planter and I like it because it's got the brown and the pink in it, which could very easily make you think of Civil War, but the colors are just modern enough to pull it way away from that because I am not normally a fan of the Civil War prints. We obviously stock just modern contemporary prints and something about the way the block printing works and the, the hues of it, pull it away from that. Although this really could easily go to that. And this one, the nice deep teal with the green is just such a fun colorway. This is one of my favorites here. Obviously I like teal, you can tell from my background. But a little bit more about Stash with Stephanie while we take a look at the rest of these fabrics. We send you uh, a fat quarter bundle of 12 fat quarters of a brand new collection every month. This is not like bargain basement fabric. It is brand new, just released fabric from the best modern designers. I just love this one. It's just so light and breezy. Um, and we ship it to you. So it's 12 fat quarters for the price of 10 plus shipping. And then we send you a free pattern that's been in inspired by the fabric, like the one we're doing today. You get access to all the patterns that we've released to date. Plus we have a new book called Fat Quarter Quilt Club, where you can get special discounts on some of our most popular ones, plus some ex exclusive coupons for that. And also you get a $10 off a $20 coupon that you can use, or you can do 25% off your purchase. So you can order additional fabric, another bundle. We often do finishing kits. So if you want to just get enough to complete the quilt in the size that you want, uh, you can do that. And then we figured it all out for you to make it as easy as possible. And this is just super, super pretty. I just love everything about this line. There is one more bit. Let me just grab it real quick. 
This one I had set aside because it isn't in the A or B bundles because we're using it as binding. Um, there were 25 prints, so we did 12 in an A bundle, 12 in a B bundle. So we got one or the other if you were a member of the club. And then this one we're using as binding. We left it out and you can order it separately. It is so pretty. I love this. A good black is always a good fun one and this will make a great binding. Your piecing is one of the most basic things you'll do as a quilter. But one tip is we need a whole lot of length in this and we tell you how much in the pattern description here and all the cutting measurements and things like that are in that as well, which you can get. It's called Stargazer at shop.quiltletixnomist.com. Because you wanna make sure that you are starting with the selvage edges nice and even. That way you've got as much length as possible when you go in. And when you're shopping for lines, sometimes these selvages are really deep. This would not be a good pattern to do one that has like a super deep selvage. Um, like sometimes cotton and, or not cotton and steel. The uh, Ruby Star Society has super big selvages. And so they're pretty, they're gorgeous, but they eat up your fabric space. And so for a pattern like this, it's not a good idea to do one because you have the length, but the selvage eats up too much. So it doesn't work quite right. All right, so I've got those edges lined up and I've just had my edges lined up on the sides here. I never pin these. I, I feel like that's a, kind of a waste of time and because you can just feed it through. And then I've got the edge of my fabric lined up even with the edge of this presser foot right here. So now that I have this set up to a quarter inch seam, I can just go ahead and stitch straight down and I should be good to go. One really great time saving tip is you can chain piece all of these. So you just lift up your presser foot with your needle down and you just give it maybe a quarter inch of space and let the feed dog just kind of take that in. That's gonna save you thread, it's gonna save you time, and you can just feed one right in after the other. Now, if you watched last month's National Stephanie pattern, you know I press seams to one side. I do that maybe like 5% of the time that I quilt. The majority of the time I like to press my seams open because it makes for really great flat joins and it gives me a lot of opportunities when I go to quilt it later because I can get right up into those points when I'm quilting. And so what to do that? All you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your piece with the wrong side up and you're just gonna open up that seam. I like to have at least three fingers running down that seam ahead of time. And I'm gonna take my tip of my iron and just have it go straight down that seam. And I'm just moving my fingers ahead of that to kind of finger press that open and I can just slide straight down. This is gonna make it super flat and it also is gonna help avoid sometimes the strips when you do it like this, like to kind of come up and then you can't get as straight of a cut when you are segmenting that later. So once I'm done with that side, what I like to do, first take a look at this. You wanna make sure there's no little wiggles on there. If you see a wiggle, it means that there's a pleat on the other side. So you wanna straighten that out. Should be a nice straight line like you see here. So now we're gonna flip that over and I'm just gonna press it from this side too. That's gonna to make it super, super flat. This also is gonna give us some great guides when we go to pin everything together for the 60 degree triangle. So even if you don't wanna do it for your regular piecing, whenever you're doing 60 degree triangles, I highly recommend going with this route. All right, I'm gonna do my other one and then we are ready to start cutting these apart. So there are two kinds of 60 degree rulers out there. There's a kind that has a tip at the top and there's a kind that has the top is blunted off. And for all of our patterns, you need one that has the tip. And it's a very big difference. The math is very, very different if you're using one that has that top removed and you're not gonna get as many pieces as you need to cut for this. And so your measurements are gonna be way, way off. So if you cut a bunch, and you're like, whoa, I only got five instead of six. It's because you're using either you, you have too fat of a salvage or you didn't pay attention to the measurement that you need for the width or the length of that strip, or you use the wrong ruler. So double check if you're having trouble getting the right amount for that. All right, so there's a couple of different ways that we're gonna cut stuff for this. Basically, we're gonna be cutting triangles and diamonds. And for all of the triangles, we're gonna have some strip piece triangles like this. We're gonna have some plain ones that are gonna be larger as part of the block. And then there's a bunch that are for the background as well. You're gonna cut the same way for all of them. But what I'm showing you on the strip piece one, because there's one extra piece that we wanna look at, and that's to make sure that this seam line is nice and even with one of the inch lines on our ruler here. So what I'm doing here is I am coming all the way over to the edge of that and I'm going to 
get everything nice and lined up at the bottom and the top. And then I'm also making sure that this center line is nice and parallel with those uh, horizontal lines on that ruler because then I know that I'm also nice and square there too so that my points are gonna line up when I go to put sew my block together. So you're gonna cut down one side and without moving the ruler, you're gonna cut down the other side. Now for this pattern, you don't need this piece. You can just toss it. Um, you could save them and use them in something else. Um, I like to not have a bunch of stuff hanging around, so I generally don't keep it. All right, so one thing that's really important here that I need to point out to you is that we have a very pointy tip, and that's very important. If you end up with too many flat tips, one, you may not get enough triangles from your strip set, and two, you're gonna mess with the math, and so it's gonna be harder to get everything to fit together well when you're all done. All right, so I've cut my first one there. Now for the triangles, all I'm gonna do is flip that ruler around, get everything lined up again, and then just keep cutting down the row. So we're just gonna keep working our way down the strip and flipping that ruler over each time. You should be able to get six of these triangles from each one that you cut, and then we'll do it with the mirror image one as well. All right, so you can see here how close I am to the selvage. I'm not gonna cut into it for this one because I had enough length, but if you needed to cut a little bit into the selvage, that's gonna be okay. Um, it's not the end of the world. A lot of that gets eaten up in the seam allowance for this pattern, but uh, you will be okay. Um, but if you start on the other end, then you are gonna have the least amount of selvage in here without having to worry about running out of fabric. All right, so I've just finished cutting one strip and you can see that I have six total, but they are mirror image. And this is why we do matching ones because when I cut my second strip here, I'm gonna be able to get enough so that I have six matching of each kind so that each of them can go in one block. So I'll have two block centers from every two matching strip sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy up and then we are going to move on to cutting some more stuff. So like I said, you're gonna use that same technique to cut your background triangles. These you can leave, it's from a width of fabric, so you can leave it folded over and get two at a time. And also for your large triangles that are going to be sort of the outer edge of the petal for your block. Now we also need to cut a few diamonds. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. For this one as well, I'm gonna go ahead and start over on the cut edge of the fabric. So that way if I need to use a little bit of the selvage, I can. So what I'm gonna do is it starts off exactly like the triangle, where you're gonna line it up, go as far over as you can, line up the width of the strip with that inch line, and then the tip of your triangle should be even with the top of your strip. Now I'm just gonna cut off this corner. And again, you don't need this, you can toss it. Here's where it gets a little bit different. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over and instead of basically instead of cutting here we're going to stop flip it over and we're going to line up the inch line now with the top of your strip and we're going to move it over so that the left edge is even with the top of the corner that we just cut and then the tip of our triangle should be even with the bottom so you can see already that when i slice here i'm going to get a nice 60 degree diamond instead this again, you have to use the ruler that has the pointy tip. The blunt edge will have a different size and it's not gonna fit together quite right for you. For the rest of these, rather than keep flipping the ruler over, you just have to slide it down and just keep on cutting as you go. Now, if you want your blocks to be matchy-matchy, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 12 matching diamonds and you're gonna stack them up and then you can put it at 12 triangles on either side so you need 24 of each again everything is in multiples of six for this and you're going to prepare all of these at the same time and it's going to save you a ton of time if you do it that way um, for this one i'm just going to do one for the video because i've already got my quilt all done and put together it's very it's beautiful i love this one um, one of the things i love about this one is like there are browns but it's not like civil war brown it's modern brown because i normally am not a fan of brown it's not my favorite but this one, this one I like. So anyway, so you're gonna set these together and we're going to, this is kind of a preview of how everything is going to go together. We're gonna to sew our triangle to our diamond, press that open, sew the triangle or diamond, press that open, and that's pretty much how the rest of the quilt goes together. So just on a bigger and bigger scale as we work on it. So let's get that sewn together. All right, so what you wanna do is when you flip these guys right sides together, you're gonna to line up the points. So your top point, it's going to be nice and even 
with the top point of your diamond. And you can see that this is hanging off just a smidge. And if I were to measure this, this little valley right here where these two are kind of coming together, that would be a quarter inch away from the edge of this fabric. So when we turn it and sew it through, we're gonna start sewing right here and our needle should be coming right out where these guys are coming together. I never pin at this step, but feel free to do that if you'd like. You can chain piece these as well, and that will speed up your process. So we're gonna press this open as well. Again, it makes for really flat joins when we have all those points coming together. And it also is gonna give us a nice little guide to line up with that I'll show you in just a second. So I just press that open from one side, give it one more hit from the other side, making sure everything is nice and straight and there's no pleats or wiggles. All right, so I always leave these dog ears intact because they are a good measuring point. So I can flip this now right sides together and line up the tip of my triangle with the tip of that dog ear and I'll know that everything is where it should be. So now I've got two little bits on each side. I've got my little divot over here and my little valley over here. And again, we're gonna sew down this side and it'll be a quarter inch away here and here. All right, so we're gonna press open again. Just be really careful now that you have other seams that you are lifting and pressing that way you don't accidentally press something going in the wrong direction. Get it nice and flat from the other side. I usually like to go over the whole block at this point. It's nice and small enough still. Get a really flat joint. And you can see this is looking fantastic. If you were to measure this out, this point should be exactly a quarter inch away from the edge. And then it will not get cut off when you do your seam allowances. Although I've got some great tips on how to make sure we don't lose those. And we'll go over all that next. All right, so I've got all my parts stacked to sew the block together. You can see that it looks really similar to when we were putting together these pieces here. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna join all of our strip pieced to our main big triangles. And we're also, then we're gonna join to the side and to the side. And so this is really simple. It looks way more complicated than it actually is. And again, I do this all in sets of matching sets of six. So there's gonna be six of each point and 12 of these guys if you want them all to match. And you can get as crazy and as scrappy as you want with that. There's no rule that says they all have to match. I just like to have kind of a controlled scrappiness to my quilt, so that's why I'm doing it this way, but it's my quilt and you are working on yours, so you do whatever you wanna do. All right, we're gonna sew this guy together and then I'm gonna show you how to join your block and sew your rows together and do it with no Y seams. So if you hear some background noise, I had to turn the AC on. I might turn it off when I film so you don't hear it, but it is 90 plus degrees for like the whole week and I'm dying. So sorry, you have to hear it today. All right, back to sewing. We're gonna sew these guys together. We're gonna start by joining this to create our diamond. I'm gonna go ahead and sew it as if I were sewing a block. So I'm gonna get all six sewn together at a time. I actually, when I was doing this to start with, I just stacked them all up and sewed all of these together all at one time and it saved a ton of time. I think I did it in halves. So I did like 10 of the blocks first and then 10 of the blocks second. And that worked out pretty well for me when I was doing it. Felt like I was doing a lot and making a lot of accomplishments and saved a ton of time. All right, so you're just gonna flip these guys right sides together and you're gonna line up your corners. And you can pin this if you want, but I typically do not. So I just kind of line those points up and I'm just gonna sew down that side. If your points don't line up perfectly at the bottom, if they're off a little bit, that's fine. It'll press out and it'll look just fine when you're all done. All right, so I've sewn a little bit. I got those first points. And then what I do is I just make sure my bottom points are lined up. I put my finger on there, let the feet dogs pull it up. Then when I get to the point where I can no longer hold it because it's going to go underneath, I just sort of put my finger to the side. And that helps maintain that straight quarter seam all the way down. All right, I'm going to quick sew the rest of these guys together too. So we're going to press... So we're gonna press all of these seams open as well. Just sort of get that started and then go ahead and press your iron, the tip of it straight down the center. Be careful not to press the seam going in the opposite direction. When you get all the way done, go ahead and give it a press from the other side as well. All right, so do that for all the rest of them and then we're gonna start sewing again. 
All right, so now it basically is what I told you. We've got our preview of here where we're gonna sew the edges together for the diamond. Now we have our diamond, so it's just bigger. And then we have a piece triangle instead of one that is just a solid piece of fabric. We're gonna go ahead and flip those guys right sides together. And this is where those dog ears really come in handy because I can line this point up with the dog ear that is underneath it. I can just line those guys together. And again, you could pin this. I normally don't. I normally just get them lined up like this and take it straight to my sewing machine. All right, so we're gonna press these open as well. We've got a lot of seams going in a lot of directions. So what you wanna do is just make sure you are Lifting and pressing that iron so you don't press anything going in the wrong direction. Just lift and press. The peak, everything's looking good. So flip it over and hit it from the side. And just repeat with the other five until you have six ready to go. All right, now we've got to sew to this side. Same process, just a different side. So when we lay this block out, we're actually only going to sew it together into a half, and then we sew the halves into rows, and that's how we get around having to do those Y seams. So that way it, it just goes real nice and real easy, and it's nice and easy peasy that way. So we're gonna get these guys sewn together, and we're gonna just gonna sew one half or one third to the center, then the other third to the center. And we do have some seams to match, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. I'm gonna sew both halves at the same time so that I have two complete halves that are ready to go into rows. All right, so we're gonna start, we'll just flip this right sides together. I'm just gonna clear this out of the way for now so you guys can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna zoom in so that we get a really close view of how I pin. If you notice, this is the first time I pinned at all for this entire quilt and it's you know I don't like to pin but there are times when it's absolutely needed and this is one of those times. All right so I'm going to start with this join here. You can see really easily because we have three really distinct fabrics that there's a point where they all come together. So that's where I want to put my pin in right where that's happening and we wouldn't see this had we not uh, pinned everything together or pressed everything open that way. Now I'm going to find the same spot here and put my pin straight through where they're all coming together again. Now, you'll notice when I do this, these points are not right on top of each other. That's okay. Don't worry about that. What you want to focus on is that this pin is going straight up and down because then it means the points that you're going to see on the front side of the fabric are right next to each other, and they're going to look fabulous when you sew them together. So pinching that between my thumb and my forefinger so the needle is going straight up and down, I take a second pin, and I'm going to pin straight across that seam, just like that. And then I can remove this one. And what that does is this holds everything in place right on top of each other. If I were to rock that, then the top fabric would move forward and the bottom fabric would move toward me and those points would no longer be right on top of each other. But by using that second pin, I'm able to ensure that stays in place. All right, now these don't have any points like that. The rest of the seams are just straight when they come in. So all you wanna do is kind of take a peek from the top and make sure they're lined up as best you can. And this should be pretty easy to see because you have good contrast in that fabric there. So that's something you definitely want to pay attention to when you're doing the scrappy quilt is that your background contrasts very well with what's going on in the core fabric. And we'll do the same thing here. I can see from the top that those are right on top of each other. And I always pin in these instances in the right side of the seam allowance. And that's because when I go and I sew this, I'm gonna stitch along and then I'm gonna stop with the needle down in this first half of the seam allowance and only then will I pull my pin because by keeping that needle down, it kind of acts like a pin, keeps everything where it should be, and ensures I have really nice good joints. Now, when I get to this part, I'm going to sew until I have my needle down in this seam. Then I can remove that pin, and I want to sew just to the right of where this seam line is because then when I open it up, I'm going to be able to see those points, and I won't have cut anything off. Um, it's very important that you do that. Just slow down, take your time when you get to points like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and get one more of these ready to go and we will stitch um, 
two thirds of our block together at once here. All right, so I did not pin the very tip of the block. I just kind of aligned those points right before I put them in. Again, I'm gonna stop with that needle down once I hit that part there, the first half that seam allowance, then remove my pin. Now, when you get to this middle part, sometimes the seams can kind of flip over when you go over the hump of your pit. So if you kind of lift that up, that'll get all your seams going in the right direction. All right, I'm gonna slow down as I come to this. I wanna make sure that I am just to the right of where all those seams came together where we, where we pinned, and then move that pin. Stitch again. Stop with my needle down in the first half of that last seam allowance. At this point, I'm gonna make sure all these points are lined up, hold it with my fingertip, and sew to the end. Again, transferring my finger so that way I can maintain that accurate quarter and seam all the way down. All right, we're gonna get these guys to press. Again, making sure to lift and press so that you don't get anything going in the wrong direction. This is a perfect example of a seam that is perfect to press open because you have a lot of seams coming together there. I believe there's six different seams coming in and it all needs to be perfectly flat, not have any bumps or humps, and you can achieve that with a pressed open seam in a way that you can't for others. Now that one was not as good. I ran out of bobbin as I was sewing and repinned it on the fly. So let's see how the other one went, because normally these turn out really fabulous. Oh yeah, look at that. That does not get much better than that. And these guys are coming together really well as well. This one's off just a smidge, but it'll be totally fine once it's all quilted and washed. You won't ever even see that that was off just that fraction of a hair. So looking awesome, looking great. We're gonna sew it to the other side and it's the same process, just working on the third side there. All right, so like I said, exact same process. Just we're gonna pin the third side here to the center and sew that guy together and then we're gonna be ready to join some rows. Oh yeah, that is looking fabulous. I love these joins, they're just perfect. And it's because we took the time to do that double pinning and we pressed those seams open so they lay absolutely as flat as possible. When you're arranging your rows, you're going to arrange them right next to each other like this, but when you sew your rows together, they're gonna come together like this and you'll sew big rows together that way. And then later, once they're all sewn together, we're gonna join them that way. And I actually have a row ready to go so I can show this process to you. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to cut your setting triangles. It's a little different than what you're used to doing, but it's not hard. So I've already squared up this edge where the selvage is going to be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my long ruler here and I'm gonna mark a quarter inch on both sides. On both sides from the edge that is squared up. So I'm gonna just do it just within the seam allowances, although this pen will iron away. And I've just got little dabs there and there. So now what I'm gonna do is there's two things you can do. You can line up your 60 degree mark because we're gonna create um, a 30 degree curvature here. And so you can line up your 60 degree with the bottom and then you can slice this way. Or you can take your 30 degree mark and sometimes you've got to flip the ruler around a little bit in order to figure out which way is the best way to do it. But this is the way I've been doing it lately. You take this 30 degree mark on your ruler and you're gonna line that up so that it is going across those marks that you made. And then the bottom of it, where it kind of rays out on your ruler, is going to be even with the bottom edge here. And that way, we're going to be able to cut this. We'll get a 30 degree angle here, and that will allow us to have a nice setting triangle to fit in there and have it work really nicely. All right, so when you look at this, you can see that we've got one little blunt end here. That's gonna be your seam allowance, so that's very important to keep that in there. So now when I cut this side, I'm going to just line up an inch line with the bottom here, and then I'm going to also make sure that I've got my quarter inch even with the tip of that triangle so that I still have that quarter inch, so I'm gonna have that blunt edge again. And now I've got this folded over, so I'm kinda getting two for one on this. 
So I've now cut four of these, so that's enough for two rows for the top and bottom. And I'll be able to sew those to the tips and tops, and you can see how it kind of fits in just like that. So then we can just lay these right sides together. This will line up with your tip, and then the bottom will line up with the tip over there and it will just it just sews up really nicely when you do so try to have this edge on the top so that way you can be sewing just to the right on the seam side of those pieces so we don't lose any of the tips all right I'm going to show you how to pin so that way you can get your rows together and not lose any of these fabulous points when you're doing that then I'm going to show you how to join your rows and we will be all done and ready to make this fabulous quilt all right, so I've got my row ready to go here. You can see these are just block halves. The other halves will be on either side in another row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin these together. It's the same process as when we pinned these together, just you got a bunch of points in a row. The other thing that's important to note is when you do this, you're gonna lay these guys right sides together and they're gonna be going in opposite directions and they are supposed to go in opposite directions. You can see when you fold that out, it straightens out. So it's something you just kind of have to get used to when you start working with Y seams. Sometimes everything doesn't go straight line and it shouldn't, uh, otherwise it won't work out quite right. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see this really well, but it's the same thing. We're gonna just do that double pinning method to keep everything nice and straight. All right, so I'm gonna put my pin in where everything is coming together and then do the same thing from the right side, the one below it. Pinch that straight up and down and then just work my way across. Now, if you wanted to, you could also pin these. What I do is I just line it up. You can see underneath you've got that dog ear there. So I'll just line up the dog ear with the corner of this triangle and then same with this one as I'm sewing. I normally don't pin those. But we're just gonna put this in our sewing machine. We're gonna sew our quarter and seam. Again, making sure you are just to the right of where all those points come together so you don't lose any. All right, I'm gonna slow down as I approach that so that way I can make sure I'm seeing just the side of where those points are. Slow down again to come to my next point. And I try not to sew over the pins, I try to stop before I get to that point. Um, but if you're going super slow, your chances of breaking a pin if you get one are, are slim. Because sometimes I overshoot and I go over a little. All right, so at this point, what I do is I will just line up those points. And sometimes, like, I've got a little bit of extra fullness in this one. I just give it a little bit of tension. You don't want to pull it, but if you give it just a tad bit of tension, then it will just kind of ease in there, and you won't have any issues with fullness when you are done with it. All right, so we have more seams than ever before coming together at this point. So I really want to make sure that I take my time and lift and press every single time. And at this point too, I do one extra step. When I flip this over to do the right side, I take my favorite non-quilty quilty tool. This is a mist sprayer. It's used in hair salons any liquid into an aerosol spray so that way I can just give it a little spritz I don't have a bunch of water droplets that take forever to iron out but I can just go over it and this is a great alternative to putting steam in your iron I feel like steam often distorts the fabric and it can be bad for your iron too it can make it start to spit so I do this instead of using steam and you can see that these joints are just fabulous they are coming together really well there are super, super flat, and that's a combination of pressing it and then open, and then also using that little bit of steam to get it extra, extra flat. And that is going to make for really fabulous quilting opportunities. I am already, my brain is thinking about what I could possibly do. All right, so I'm gonna show you now how to join your rows, and then you'll have all the skills you need to do this quilt at home. All right, so I'm gonna show you just the pinning process for sewing your rows together because the rest of it is all the same. You should be a pro at it by this point. But I just wanted to kind of show you how this works. So I've got my two rows here. 
So I've got half of a block here and half of a block there, and they are going to meet. And then the blocks kind of offset. So these are two different blocks, and their partners are going to be on the either sides. And then we'll have more that match up as we go down. So we're going to get all your blocks sewn together in halves into rows. And then you're going to add your setting triangles to your ends. And then when you're all done, you're going to flip everything right sides together. And then you're just going to go through and pin everything, matching up your points in most cases. And in some cases where these blocks come together, you're just going to make sure that those seams are overlapping just like they did when we sewed our block centers together. So it actually is, is pretty simple at this point. It's just more the same. You're just going to flip those guys right sides together, carefully go down and pin each seam, and then just sew it together and you're good to go. It really goes very fast once you get to this point. And I just love doing quilts like this because they look so, so complicated, but they really are not bad once you break it down. I mean, really, we had three blocks. We had this block. We had this block here where we have this, this is just your piece and then we cut triangles from it and this was just a diamond with some triangles sewn to the sides and then this is just one plain triangle that's all this quilt is that's that's it there's no y seams there's nothing super complicated you do some careful pinning and you end up with some fabulous beautiful results i wanted to show you this one because this is my favorite block combination one of there's there's a couple that i think are really fabulous but this is definitely one of them i love that uh, chartreuse greeny yellow it just is I love that color citron is like one of my I think it's the least appreciated color but really makes it so much more uh, pop like this teal wouldn't look as good without that next to it but anyway that's enough about my love of fabric and my love of plants for that matter I hope you enjoy this this one is called stargazer you can download it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com you can get just a pattern or if you join the club, then you can get uh, the pattern for free. Um, and if you join the club, you get three yards of fabric. So 12 fat quarters for the price of 10. It's $29.99 a month, every month plus shipping. And then you also are going to get a free pattern every month. You get access to all the free patterns that we have released to date as part of this program. You're going to get a special deal on a book that uh, features a lot of these patterns. And also, you get a $10 off a $20 purchase coupon, or you can choose 25% off your purchase, so you can get additional fabric to make these quilts every month. We often offer finishing kits, or in this case, you can get, we split it into A and B bundles, and then you can get that in your binding fabric, and just be ready to rock and roll, and just have everything you need to make the quilt that you see there, or if you have something else in mind, you can just get yardage or another bundle of what you think is the most fun. Thanks so much for following along. Um, I really love doing this. It has been one heck of a month. We started uh, distance learning here in the Sebbing household. So I am Mrs. Sebbing uh, until about noon every day, teaching first grade as a co-teacher for my daughter. And it has been a transition for everyone. So we are not going to have a quilted picture but we will have the finished top for you guys to see so you can see what it looks like i really love it i'm going to use the black fabric that uh, came in this i left it out of the quilt top i'm using it just for the binding to give it that nice framed edge and i will get to that and i have a gopro so i'm going to film the quilting process as well um, but thank you for giving me a little bit of grace this month especially to our subscribers uh, it has been a transition and we're figuring it out and we will definitely keep to our schedule of releasing one pattern a month because that is our commitment to you as part of this club and we will hopefully get them quilted as well in the future as we get used to this new normal that is education in the era of COVID. Thanks so much and until next time happy quilting.